Coming up next, SPNN takes us back to 1999 with their series, Quarter Notes, Jazz from the Artist's Quarter. In this episode, Dave Carr and Gary Burke. There's a long-standing tradition in jazz of tenor saxophone duos, or tenor tandems, if you will. Folks like Al Cohn and Zoot Sims, Johnny Griffin and Eddie Lockjaw Davis, Sonny Stitt and Gene Ammons, and uh, from those wonderful jazz at the Philharmonic Tours, Flip Phillips and Illinois Jaquette. Well, the Twin Cities has its own tenor titans, a term that uh, Gary Berg will use to describe himself and his partner, Dave Carr. Gary will also tell you that he and Dave are going to do battle, uh, but he means in a friendly way, of course, in another jazz tradition called cutting contests, where musicians stand head-to-head -head or toe-to-toe -to -toe and see who can outdo whom. So that's what we're going to have, a friendly battle of saxes between two Twin Cities pros, Gary Berg and Dave Carr. Dave doesn't want to talk, so I'll talk. Um, we're the uh, local tenor titans, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, this is the battle. Anyway, Dave Carr. And Gary Berg. We got him to talk. It's a major event. Thank you. 
All right, next we're going to hear uh, a tune called We Dot, and in jazz jargon, it's a flag waver. Uh, that's the older term for it. A newer one is it's a burner, or it's burning. Uh, and another good opportunity to compare our tenor saxophonist. Uh, let's look at them physically. Uh, Gary Berg is much more physical player, rocks back and forth and, and grimaces and, and uses uh, body language. Dave Carr stands there practically stationary, but either way works because the result is the same. Uh, both play uh, really exciting solos. I'm particularly taken by Dave's, however, here because I like the way he builds the solo without increasing the volume much uh, or the tempo, uh, but simply by his choice of notes and his phrasing, he builds the solo in intensity. Uh, listen and watch for that. Also impressed with, oh, by the way, and his solo is so exciting that I think it's Kenny Horst who lets out a yelp uh, spontaneously. And speaking of Kenny, uh, I really like his drum solo here, and I like the camera work uh, because you can watch his sticks and watch exactly what kind of uh, devices he's playing in his solo. So here we are going way up tempo with We Dot. Thank you. 
One of the great sounds in jazz is that of two saxophones in unison or in harmony. And that's what we get here from Gary Berg and Dave Carr uh, as they state the theme and also close with the theme to Charlie Parker's Donna Lee. Uh, one of the things that you'll want to watch for here that I noticed was how Dave Carr listens while Gary Berg solos uh, very intently and in fact seems to be mouthing uh, perhaps uh, what he anticipates from Gary or mouthing what he's mulling in his own head uh, that he's going to play when it's her, his turn to solo. Uh, also, I like the fact that uh, they changed up things just a little bit here, but it makes a big difference by allowing uh, uh, drummer Kenny Horst to open the piece with an unaccompanied intro. And by the way, if you love the sound of uh, two saxophones together, uh, you ought to check out a group called Super Sax. I'm sure many of you are familiar with them. There, you hear five saxophones in harmony. And not only on the theme, but in improvisations also. Very exciting sound, super sax. Here we are with uh, a bebop classic, Charlie Parker's Donna Lee. <laughs> Thank you. 
Here's another one of those tunes that's in just about everyone's repertoire. It's called Good Bait, and it's by a very well-known composer arranger, Tad Dameron. When I double-checked to make sure that Tad Dameron uh, was the composer, however, I found that there's a co-composer, none other than Count Basie, which uh, certainly was a surprise to me and probably is to some of you. One of the things I like about this performance is that it's uh, taken in a very nice medium tempo, nice medium tempo groove. That's my favorite tempo as a listener, and I think where I'm a musician, uh, I would enjoy playing in that tempo. I know a lot of players do. Uh, just a quick observation of uh, Gary Berg's solo here. I thought that uh, we heard a little more of the bottom and the top of his register here and uh, that was a nice change. Also at the end, uh, they, after having played the theme in the beginning in harmony, at the end, uh, they're either a little out of sync or they decided to play the ending theme uh, in counterpoint. Uh, you can decide for yourself which you think uh, is the case. Thank you. 
Thank you.
For our closer, we return to the Great American Songbook for another standard called You Stepped Out of a Dream. And on this, I think you'll find that Dave Carr is, as ESPN would say, en fuego. Uh, he's a tough act to follow, but uh, Gary Berg uh, more than holds his own. And as a result of this friendly competition between the two, uh, we may just get our best playing of the night on this tune. Also, there's a lively uh, drum solo by Kenny Horst. And because of uh, sharp camera work and direction, uh, we're practically in the drummer's seat during this solo. So enjoy. You stepped out of a dream. Thank you. 